Oh, shh. Don't tell anyone. I'm hiding in my pantry. Why? I'm about to try to eat a frosted donut. It's really not very good for my waistline, though. What do you think? Let's make one in Photoshop instead. Hi, this is Steve Weinrieb, and we are going to now make our 3D donut in Photoshop. The steps we're going to use are Photoshop CC's 3D tools to create a frosted donut, which of course is my favorite kind. And we're going to create a new document for our donut. We'll use one of Photoshop's mesh presets to create the donut. And we'll adjust the position of the donut and the lighting on the donut. We're going to color the donut a nice toasted brown and add a texture to the donut. Then we'll paint on the bump map of the donut to create a raised area that'll be our icing, and we'll paint white onto the icing to give ourselves nice white icing on the donut. We'll drop the donut into the plate photo, and we'll adjust the lighting and the focus of the donut to match the photo that we're dropping it into. We'll puff up our donut a little bit, and then we'll render it out and tweak it as we need to to get a terrific final product. I'm going to make the plate photo as well as the PDF of these steps available to you in the description of this video so you can check there for those items and work through this on your own as well. So let's get started and we're going to first open up a new document so go file new and we're going to create a new document that's 600 pixels by 600 pixels. We'll just make the resolution 72 pixels per inch, and we'll you leave everything else at its default. White background, sRGB is good. Click OK, and there's our new document. And then to create our donut, we simply go to the 3D menu, go down to New Mesh from Layer, choose Mesh Preset, and we're going to use a donut as our mesh preset. Photoshop's going to ask us if we want to switch to the 3D workspace. That's fine. Good idea. Well, so I'll just click yes. There's our 3D donut. And when we go into the 3D workspace and we create a 3D object, the move tool automatically becomes the active tool. And we have a 3D rotate tool, which the move tool basically gives us our 3D tools that we can use to move around our object. And I can rotate this donut. I'm going to rotate it to be pretty much straight on to me. And I'm going to get rid of this kind of busy ground plane that we're seeing here. So I'm going up to the View menu, I'm going to choose Show, and I'm going to uncheck 3D Ground Plane. And again, I'll just move that donut kind of facing me directly. And that's looking pretty good. Now, let's do something with the lighting first. So I'm going to come over here to the Layers panel and uncheck Default IBL. That just turns off the default image-based light that is reflecting onto the donut. Then I'm going to come over here to the canvas. I'm going to click on this little round glowing ball icon, and that's going to display the one infinite light, which is lighting up our donut. And I can grab the handle here to adjust that infinite light in its direction. I'm going to just kind of move it so that it's aiming straight on to the donut. We can come back and adjust that later, but that's going to affect the shadow that we're going to get from the donut. And then I'll just click off the image to hide that that infinite light to get back so we can just view our donut as it is. Let me just zoom in here a little bit and let's get to work on our donut. First of all, we need our donut to be a brown color. So over here in the layers panel, we see here donut material default texture. And I'm going to double click that and that opens up the donut materials texture. And I'm going to fill this with a brown color. So go up to the Edit menu, choose Fill. And instead of Contents Foreground Color, I'm going to choose Color. And in here, I'm going to choose a brown color. I'm just going to suggest you use something like 177 Red, 128 Green, and We'll go 50 on the blue, and that gives a relatively nice brown color. Depending on how toasted you want your donut, you can make that a little more or less saturated or lighter or darker. And click OK. OK again, and that colors our texture. And then Save and Close, so I'll go File, 
save and file close, or you could do Command or Control S, Command or Control W. And now we have our donut colored, and I can do a little more work here to it to add a texture because this is looking very smooth. It looks more like a brown tire right now. So next, we're going to come over here to the 3D panel and click on Donut Material. And you can see the Properties panel becomes populated with a whole bunch of interesting items here. And to the right of the one called Bump, I'm going to click on the folder and choose New Texture. And that gives me a new bump texture that's the same size as the document. Click OK. And then we're going to edit that bump texture. And I can go back here to that same icon and choose Edit Texture. Now, I could do this over in the Layers panel as well. There's the bump texture down there. and I could just double click that. So either way, double click that uh, over here in the Layers panel or come over to Bump, Edit Texture. And there is the bump texture. And First of all, to this, I want to add a filter, but I'm going to add it as a smart filter. So I need to turn this background layer into a smart object. So I'm going to the drop down menu of the Layers panel and choosing Convert to Smart Object. You can also right click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object from there as well. And then I'm going to apply my filter. So Filter, Noise, and I'm going to add noise in an amount of 15. And going to choose Gaussian and monochrome. And then click OK. And that adds the noise to that smart object as a smart filter. So if I wanted to come back in here and change how much noise, which effectively you'll see in a minute how this works, but we'll create the texture on the donut. I can do that very easily. Now before I save and close this, I want to add a new layer because we're going to do some painting on this bump map and you can't paint on a smart object. So we're going to create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And then we can save and close. So file, save and file, close. And again, you could use Command or Control S and Command or Control W. Anyway, you can see now the donut has a texture to it because when you create a, a bump map and then add black or white on the bump map, what happens is black creates recessed areas and white creates raised areas in the bump map. But if you recall, we created a new layer that is going to let us paint on the bump map. So we're going to do that next. And painting on the bump map, we want to first make sure that what we're doing is painting on the bump map. So we're going to go up to the 3D menu, drag down to Paint on Target Texture. And instead of painting on the diffuse, we're going to paint on the bump. Then we're coming over to the toolbar, and we'll choose the Brush Tool. And let's choose the round fan brush here. And we can use the right or left bracket keys to make our brush bigger or smaller. And what I want to paint, I don't want to make recessed areas. I want to make raised areas. Now, the default foreground and background colors are black and white. And if I painted with black, I'd create a recessed area, as you can see. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that stroke with Command or Control Z. And flop my foreground and background colors and paint white onto the donut. And what this is doing is it's painting raised areas onto the donut. Those raised areas are going to be what we're going to use for frosting. So let me just paint all over here. And as I'm painting onto it, you can see the raised areas appear. And it might be hard to see everything that we want to the, all the areas of the donut that we want to paint to be raised. So we can just go back and forth between our Move tool and the Brush tool. And I'll just use the V key to turn my cursor into the Move tool, and then the B key to turn my cursor into the Brush tool. And go back and forth that way, or you can go back and forth in the toolbar. But the keyboard shortcuts will speed up your work quite a bit. And then again, V for the 3D rotate tool and then B for the brush tools. 
just know that I'm tapping those keys when I go back and forth between the move tool and the brush tool as I go around here and find the little bit of bits of areas that I might have missed painting in for the for our, our frosting. Now another way to do that if you don't want to go back and forth between the brush tool and the move tool is to come down here. We have a little 3D movement widget in the bottom left of the screen and the first one is the orbit the 3d camera tool which effectively does the same thing as rotating the object it's really rotating the camera around the object but that's fine and we can use that to rotate our donut around instead of going back and forth between the tools and you might find that a little faster as well So that's looking pretty good. I like those areas that we have for the raised areas that we're going to paint our as our, our frosting. And I added quite a bit of frosting to this, but I using that bristle tip brush, we have some streaks, and I wanted that. I wanted this to look less like a machine-made donut, more like a good old handmade donut that somebody might have paid, painted the frosting on with a big pastry brush. Then we need to paint white because, of course, our frosting right now is the same color as the donut. So we're going to go back to the 3D menu and choose Paint on Target Texture, and we're going to paint on the diffuse. And using the same brush, and again, white as our foreground color, we're going to paint white onto the diffuse. And this basically lets us make our frosting white. So I will just go around here the same way that I painted the raised areas when I was painting on the bump, but this time I'm going to just color those raised areas with white paint. And I can vary my brush size with the bracket keys. And again, I could go back and forth between the Move tool and the Brush tool, or use the widget on screen here to move back and forth on the donut to find the areas that I need to paint in. You know, we get those inner areas and all the little bits on the outside as well. And we're going to do a little bit of mushing of our frosting in a moment, but right now I'm just getting all the areas painted in that we need to. That's looking really pretty good. I know it's not precise around the edges, but that's fine. Again, I wanted this to have a handmade, kind of like the icing was put on and then maybe dripped as it dried a little bit. So I'm going to add to that effect and next I'm going to change tools to the mixer brush tool. And in the mixer brush tool I'm going to turn off, load the brush after each stroke, leave clean the brush after each stroke set, and you just use this default wet brush here. And again I'm going to choose that round fan brush and the brush palette and I'm going to paint just over these little bits of edges. And what this does is it just streaks the paint and smears it. And that's just perfect for the effect that we're looking for for a hand painted on frosting. Notice that if you drag from the brown up into the white, you'll smear some brown up into the white and vice versa. If I pit drag from the white into the brown, I smear some of the white down into the brown. So that's great. And I'll just kind of paint in these hard edges so that they blend with the donut just as if this frosting were put on while the donut was hot. get a few of those inner areas just 
paint it in a little bit. Now, when we place this donut into our photo, we're only going to see it from one angle, but I want the flexibility of finding the best angle here, and the donut will have different characteristics all around. So that's looking great. And let's go back to our Move tool and just rotate that donut straight on. So our donut's pretty much created, and we can move on and start assembling our final image. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to the plate image and with the move tool I'm going to click in the plate, drag up to the donut image, drag down into the donut image, and I'm going to hold down the shift key to drop the plate image dead center into the donut. There's the plate and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and choose Edit Free Transform and just transform, let me hold the shift key down to scale the transform properly, and I'm going to just position this plate image down here so that it's filling the donut frame. We're just going to end up with a square frame here, which I want, but I'm going to have the plate just cut off a little bit, which will be a little bit more yeah, interesting composition and focus the eye on the donut. Click the check mark to commit the transform and then drag over here in the layers panel. We're going to drag that plate layer below the donut layer so we can see our donut and then click on the donut to make that the active layer and now we can start positioning it. So we can see the donut and its shadow below the donut. Now I'm going to render this at all, so we're, I'll do that in a moment. You'll get a much better idea of how the shadow is really looking. But I can use our widgets over here right on screen to just drag the donut down into place and then rotate it. Let's keep positioning and dragging it down. If I want the donut a little smaller, I'll just slide it back a little bit. Let's bring it down so that it's looking nice and natural on the plate. Let's rotate it. There we go. And I don't want that shadow overlapping the lip of the plate, but I could always adjust that later with a layer mask. But I'll just leave that. That's looking really pretty darn good. Let me zoom in back in a little bit. And let's render the donut a little bit to get a better idea of how our image is looking. And we render from the bottom of the properties panel. We have a render button here. I'm going to click that and our rendering will begin. There's a progress, a little progress bar in the bottom left of your workspace, but you don't really don't need to let this render all the way. It'll render quite a bit in just the first few seconds. So I'm going to tap the escape key to stop the render and I can see already that the top of the donut when rendered is really looking pretty hot. So let's make a few adjustments here to our donut. And we're going to start out by going to the 3D panel. And in the 3D panel, I'm going to click on the infinite light. And then I see up here in the properties panel some properties of the infinite light. So one of the properties, let me just do, uh, go back here to the infinite light and I, I want to decrease the intensity of the light down to 70 percent we just enter in 70 might be a little easier and then I'm going to increase the shadow because notice the shadow isn't quite as, it's a harsh shadow, but it isn't quite as soft as the shadow around the plate. The shadow around the plate has a slight soft edge. So I'm going to increase the softness of the shadow to 30%. And then let's render that again a little bit. And we're going to see that the shadow is looking much more natural to the image and the brightness on the donut is looking pretty correct for the donut as well. So I'm not going to render all the way again yet. I'm going to tap the escape key because we have uh, a couple of more things we want to do. And I'm just going to click off the image to hide that infinite light. And that brings us to our 3D camera view here. And in our 3D camera view, I can play around with depth of focus. Notice that the background here, the in the in the plate image, the 
the, the cup is out of focus and the back of the plate is out of focus and the plane of focus is falling right about the middle of the plate. And then again, the very front of the plate is out of focus. So we're going to in here in the in the for the 3d camera i'm going to adjust the depth of field slider to a depth of five and that just throws off the focus let me just again enter in just an exact five and then we can play around with our distance. And as I drag the distance slider, you'll see the depth of focus go from the front of the donut to the back of the donut. So I'm just going to drag that distance slider to about 0.3. And that's going to just nail that focus across the front of the donut but it makes sense here because falling right across where the focus is on the plate and then the focus starts to fall off again at the front of the plate. And again, let's just render a little bit to get a better idea of how this is looking. Again, you just render for a few seconds and get a really pretty good sense of what the final is going to look like. You don't need to render all the way because rendering can take a long time. It depends on your system. But I'm just going to tap the escape key here to stop the rendering process. Donut's looking a little slender. Now, bearing in mind this is a low-fat donut because it's virtual, uh, our donut's still looking pretty slender. We can make this a little fatter. Hey, why not? So I'm going to make this donut a little bigger using our 3D coordinates. So in the 3D panel, I'm going to click on the donut and then come up here in the properties panel, click on the coordinates and over here in the third Y value, I'm just going to hover my cursor over the Y and drag to the right a little bit. And you can see that donut inflate. So I'm going to just inflate this donut up to about an amount of, let's go up to an amount of four. Or let's go about five. Hey, why not? Let's go up to four and a half. What do you say? Okay, that's looking pretty good. Again, let's render a little bit. Donut's looking good. And I think at this point we can let the image render all the way and we'll do some tweaking once it's done. Our donut is finished rendering and we can now take a look at it by going to the Layers panel, I'll just click off the 3D layer and click on Layer 1 just to hide that on-screen grid. And we can see this looks pretty good. It's matching our image, it's matching the focus, it's matching the lighting. The only thing that is bugging me now is that the bottom of the donut's shadow really isn't quite as dark as the shadow under the plate or the shadow that the lighting should cast. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment over the donut. So I'm going to click on the donut layer and then to make that the topmost layer, go up to Window Adjustments to open up the Adjustments panel and add a Curves Adjustment. Then I'm just going to choose the on-screen widget here, the on-screen tool in the Curves Adjustment panel and drag down on the shadow of the donut and I'll drag up on a lighter part of the donut, not on the frosting, I don't want to make that too light, just the lighter part of the donut here. And then I'm going to, at the bottom of the properties panel of our curves adjustment here, I'm going to click on the clipping mask icon and that just clips the curve to just the donut so it's not affecting the entire image, it's only affecting the donut. So that is our project. And you can check the description for links to the step-by-step -step PDF plus the photo I used in this tutorial. Again, I'm Steve Weinreeb. And if you enjoy this tutorial, please don't forget to click the subscribe button to keep up with our latest videos. I'll see you next time.